Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-host, Kiana Holloman and Emily Zarsk. How y'all doing? Good. Hey, how are you? I'm doing good, doing good. I'm reporting live from uh, Fort Sam Houston here in San Antonio uh, on, on a trip down here. And uh, our next guest is super familiar with this area, uh, but I'm, I'm super excited. How Are y'all excited about today's guest? Super so stoked. Yes. We're shaking. Absolutely. <laughs> So we have a, a larger than life, uh, literally larger than life uh, a guest today. And so without further ado, Emily, please introduce today's guest. So today's guest is so well known um, and loved that he hardly needs an introduction. He was one of the most dominant players in NBA history, was a four time NBA champion, 15 time all star and is currently an NBA analyst. He's also a musician, actor, entrepreneur and philanthropist. Please give a big chief chat welcome to Shaquille O'Neal. Hey. Shaq, it's great to you? have you with us today. Thank you. Let me center this thing off. I don't know this way. <laughs> right there, right there. Right there. Okay, good. How are you? What's going on? Hey, I'm doing good. How you doing? Good. Did you say you were in Fort Sam Houston? I am today. I'm in Fort Sam Houston uh, at the at the uh, B, the PX. I'm sorry, because I'm on an army base today, so uh, I got to say PX. And you know how many you know how many times I worked at the PX. You know, you know how many times I bagged uh, groceries at the commissary. You know how many times I waited outside the PX and I asked people if they need help with their bags to try to get one or two dollars. Oh, so, so you mean to tell me you was on our payroll? You was on our payroll at one point, Shaq? Well, no, I was getting all no, I was getting all my money tax free. Don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Can you let can I let, can you let our uh, viewers know where you're joining from today? I'm from right now. I'm in Atlanta shooting a commercial, but to all the viewers, I am an AFES kid. Started off in Fort Monmouth, New Jersey then moved to Fort Stewart, Georgia, then moved to an a, a army base in uh, Hanau, West Germany, then moved to Bill Flick in West Germany, and ended up in Fort Sam Houston. So I am a, a, an a APs kid for life. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. And, and we appreciate you uh, sharing some time with us today. Um, just to let our viewers know, Shaq was generous enough to provide some autographed items today for us to give away to four lucky winners, such as the, a pair of Shagnos Shagnosis shoes. Gnosis. Uh, stay tuned. Yes, yeah, stay tuned to the show to find out how to enter. So, Shaq, what was it like growing up in the military, and how did it shape you into the person you are today? It was lovely. We're from the projects of Newark, New Jersey. And when I moved to Fort Monmouth, it was the first time I had structure, first time I had a house, the first time we had DYA, depending on youth activities, it was sports, everything was just so organized. It taught me discipline. And I can remember my father saying, you're getting too big, you need to go get a job. First place I went was PX. And I remember I, could, I first looked at AAFES. And I asked my dad, I was like, what does that mean? How do you even say that? He's like, AFI. So you know, I'm, very, I'm very familiar with AFI. So when they told me I was having this uh, chief chat with uh, Chief Master uh, Sergeant Kevin OSBY talking about AFIs, and, you know, I was like, listen, I'm an AFIs kid. And I don't know if a lot of kids know I'm an AFIs kid. So all the things that they're going through, I went through. And your family then settled in Texas and basketball became a big part of your life. Aside from being extremely good at it, what was it that drew you to basketball? Well, when we left New Jersey, uh, my father introduced me to sports on Fort Monmouth. Uh, I know you guys are familiar with uh, DYA. I don't know if that's uh, still what they call it today, but similar to 
to the AAU program. So football season, it was football. Basketball season, was basketball. Baseball season, baseball, soccer. So every season, I had an activity to do. And, you know, just because I was taller and bigger than everybody, I just, you know, really stuck with basketball. So, you know, you, you mentioned DYA. And, and, and so my son, he, he kind of came up in the youth sports program uh, on base. And I was his coach when he was like, five or six years old and and I had to hurry up and stop doing that because you know you start getting Joe Jackson on your own son when when you're his coach coming up and so I had to be like you know what <laughs> let me uh let, let me let me give him some retrieval and let let me just be a, a father in the stands to watch him but I can tell you I did not have anybody that that was even comparable to you on my team on my team on my fifth grade well five-year-old team so they they had they had a lot of work to do that. My dad was always my coach, and he was a drill sergeant, so I got it, and it worked, and it, it helped me, you know, especially with, with the military discipline that he instilled in me, plus the discipline that, that I, I had to have myself to become a great player. It all worked out, all because of the Army and all because of eating that eight-piece food at the commissary. That's, there we go. There we go. <laughs> So uh, you you were the number one overall pick in the 92 NBA draft and then dominated for 19 years and, and currently ranking the top 10 in all-time scoring and blocks, in scoring and in blocks. So what did you enjoy most about your NBA career and what do you miss about it the most? I don't really miss anything. I, I did it. I did it my way. I, uh, you know, the way I got there was sort of karate kiddish. You know, growing up on army bases, moving every four years. Was the moving every four years that just prepared me to be the worldwide figure that I am? Because you know, I was started off in New Jersey, South Georgia, West Germany, Texas, the Bayou of Louisiana, Orlando. So you know, being that you yeah, the 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 repetition of moving every four years, it just helped me relate to all different peoples, and you know, just. Help me, you know, start over every four years. So I would like to say I played with Orlando four years. I did, like to say I did two terms in LA, played there eight years, and then you know, went from you know team to team after that. But it just prepared me to be the person that I am today. Well, well, thank you for uh, kind of sharing that as well. Well, I'm, well, I'm I'm a Louisiana boy, so I grew up LSU fan. So you know, you and uh, you know, at the time Chris Jackson, I, man, I I used to watch y'all all the time. Uh, but I do like the fact that you're bringing up the, the the military brat because I just had a conversation with a couple of folks that I know about their kids having a hard time adjusting, moving from city to city uh, every two to three years, and how it, it may be tough at that point, but it prepares you for the world in the in the future. So uh, thank you for kind of reiterating that point on how how it like I said, kids are pretty selfish. Well, not selfish. I, they just they just want what they want, and so. Uh, once they have friends and move to another place, they really don't want to move to the next place because they got a friend and kind of stuff set up at, at the previous base. But it's it's definitely tough on the military brat. But I just want to do re reemphasize that man, it, it prepares you so much for adulthood. It's ridiculous. I remember the first time I complained to my father, and he said, "Listen, soldier, you have to do what the military requires you to do." That was the last, and that was the last thing he said. Was no <laughs> argument. Was he said, listen, you have to do what the military requires you to do. You think I want to leave every four years? No, but this is what the country needs me to do, so we're leaving. Yes, sir. Man. Yeah, and I had a similar conversation with my dad as well, because I'm an Army brat too, and I will concur with Chief that it does help you kind of maneuver in life. So I live in Dallas now. I've lived a lot of different places. And speaking of living in Dallas, you, Ernie, Kenny, and Chuck, we're here during the NBA playoffs time. I didn't get to see you guys. I saw Chuck was like on a horse or something in Victory Park, and I was so sad I missed that. But you guys are seriously musty programming. <laughs> the back and forth hijinks, your basketball expertise, make it a show unlike any other, the best sports show hands down. So what's it like working on that show? And more specifically, what's it like working with Chuck? Well, they, they allow us to utilize our humor. You know, we, we figure that if we're going to keep you up 1, 2 a.m. in the morning, we at least have to make it fun. Because a lot of people can't really stay up to 2 and then have to get up 
and go to work at eight. So if we're going to keep you up late, and if you want to stay up there late, we want to see you to bed laughing, having a great time. Chuck is a great guy, sort of like the big mean brother that I never had. You know, we have a lot of arguments, but all our arguments are respectful arguments. I know in the military, you can have a heated argument as long as you end it with ma'am or sir. That's what my father always used to tell me. As long as you end it with sir. <laughs> You know, as long as you end it with sir you could, or ma'am, you can say whatever you need to say. But I also <laughs> live in Dallas. I also live in Dallas. They call me the King of Carrollton. So you <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, And but you, well, you said you said as long as you end it with sir, but let you gotta talk, start it with. Let her talk, Chief Sir. Let her <laughs> talk, Chief Sir. You never left her, her sir. I I I I is Jack. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. O'Neill. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I was just gonna I was just gonna put in there. I live in Dallas as well. So if you're looking at, you know, maybe having a housewarming party, Kiana and I happy to happy to come. We're good. Yeah. We're a good time. So just yeah, just yeah. let us know. Um, no. right, but back to you, Chief. <laughs> no, no, I was gonna say that um man, I, I lost my train of thought, man. I saluted when you salute yeah. no, what I said. <laughs> You said to end it with sir or ma'am, you got to begin it with, with all due respect. When you, yes, with all due right. respect, and then, yeah, and then you yeah. go in and then end it with sir or ma'am, and you probably still gonna get in trouble, but at least you you, you thought know, about right. it. It was it's a thoughtful thoughtful yes. situation. You already know. <laughs> and Shaq, we have many of America's heroes and their families watching us live. What message would you like to share with them? I would just like to say thank you for your service. You know, you guys are definitely underpaid. I appreciate you. There would be no Shaquille O'Neal if it wasn't for military, if it wasn't for atheists, if it wasn't for DYA. It taught me structure. It taught me respect. It taught me everything about the character of the world knows a Shaq. And, you know, you know how you say it takes a village to raise a child was raised in a military village. And that's why when you see me, you see a guy that's really a nice guy. You know, it's no, it's no secret about how I grew up. This is how I grew up. It was very nice and very simple. And it was very beautiful. And again, I know kids think they have trouble moving every four years, but it's an experience a lot of children don't get. Growing up in the projects of Newton, New Jersey, I was like, man, I gotta, man, I wish I could leave all this and then you go to Georgia and you see cows and you're like, oh my God, what is this? And then you leave there and you get on a cargo plane and you end up in West Germany and they hand you coats and we're like, what is this? And then you leave there and you end up in Texas, cowboy hats and tobacco and all that. And, but it was all fun. And now that I'm 50 years old, I can relate to any person in the world. Doesn't matter what race, color, religion. Because of that experience, Dr. Shaquille O'Neal can relate. And it wasn't for the military, I wouldn't have that experience. So all the military family, especially the moms and dads, I appreciate you very much and I love you. And all the kids, Shaq is an AFI's kid. And if Shaq can make it, you can make it. Absolutely. And I share that same sentiment. Uh, I grew up in the projects in Louisiana and uh, the military was- Louisiana ain't got no projects. Get out of here. They got, Louisiana we got projects. Ain't got no Go to Shreveport, Louisiana. We represent Shreveport, Louisiana project on the hill. Okay. But not, <laughs> no, but uh, like I said, me me being able to join the military is, was one of the best decisions I made in my life. And just to be able to see the world and and, and meet people that I would have never met. And, and I definitely wouldn't be doing this. I wouldn't be talking to Shaquille O'Neal uh, on a Zoom call uh, representing this fine organization that I, that I have without the military. So uh, thank you for shouting us out. Uh, but you, no, but you, no. you so much more than a basketball player uh, or analyst. You, you are a rapper, an actor, entrepreneur, philanthropist. Uh, I think I said that right. You know, what, what drives you to be, want to be successful in so many ventures? Again, growing up on an army base at the youth center, you know how it is. You, you know, the youth center is similar to the Boys and Girls Club of America. So you're in there one day, and you know what? I want to be a rapper. You're in there one day, man, did you see that movie last night? Did you see it? And you're like reacting movies and you're playing sports. So I've had experience with doing this stuff. So then when I got the uh, 
opportunity to do it on a professional level. I tried it. Like we used to freestyle in the, in the youth center every day, three o'clock battles, like all the other rappers did. And then, you know, you get to leave the base and go see shows. And so uh, right outside of uh, Fort Sam Houston, they had a place called Water Park USA. I don't know what it's called now, but it's right off, I think it's right off 35. They had shows there every Friday, Saturday. So we used to, I used to like, like I say, go to the PX and ask people, hey, let me carry your bags and get two, three dollars. It costs five dollars to get in. So once we had our five dollars, you know, we stay there all day. We see all the rappers and we're just sort of like, you know what, I think I can do this. So when I got the opportunity to do it, I just took advantage of it. So Emily and I were just chatting recently. We saw that you were DJing with Luca overseas. So DJing is a part of your repertoire now. So that's really exciting. And just as, you know, Emily and I grew up watching you, millions of kids are growing up watching you and admiring you now. Um, so how do you feel about having the responsibility of being a role model for young children? I like to use the word real model. You look up the word role in the dictionary, it talks about playing a part. I like to play real parts. I try not to promote myself as, ah, uh, because those that promote mm -hmm. themselves as, ah, uh, are the ones that get in trouble. With me, what you see is what you get. I like to always say I have the military discipline to say and make the right decisions, but if I happen to make a mistake, I would rather people just learn from my mistake. But I try not to act like I'm holier than thou or, or act like I'm perfect. I just do what I was taught you know, from my father, Sergeant Philip A. Harrison, and my mother, Dr. Lucille O'Neill, and hopefully it's, it's something that they're proud of. But if I ever get out of line and do something crazy, I just want people to learn from my mistake. So with me, I, I like to use the term real model because I, I give it to them the real. Like I tell kids, I'm like, listen, 20 of us in here, only one of us is going to the NBA. But 19 of us, or 20 of us can get bachelors, masters, and doctorates. So think about that. Hey, there's 20 kids in here. Only one of y'all gonna be a rapper. There's 20 kids in here. Three of y'all could go to the military. Like, you know, so like I, I tell them the real, I don't say, oh, hey, all of y'all can make it. It's not true. I keep it real with them and I speak their language. I think that's why they relate to me. I love, love that. It. <laughs> yeah. no, I love that. And so we're going to turn really quickly, Shaq, um, to Facebook feed because we have a lot of people watching and you are getting a lot of love. Um, everyone is just in here thanking you for being with us today. Um, and other people are saying how big of a heart you have because um, I, I do keep up with you um, and I see all the amazing things that you do. And I'm sure you do a lot more that goes totally unseen and unnoticed. So that's incredible. Um, and everyone, uh, Beth is stealing real model. She likes that as well. Um, and while I have you here, Shaq, you did send us um, some amazing Shaq items to give away to our viewers today. And I got the privilege. I don't know how I got trusted with this, but I actually have the products here and we are giving away several items. All you have to do is put your name, like this uh, video and put your name in the comments. And we are doing this giveaway until tomorrow at 12 p.m. PM Central Standard Time. So you've got about 24 hours to enter. And I wanted to show you really quickly, we have this LA Lakers autographed hat, um, which is really unique. And that's your signature, Shaq, there it is. And we that's also, <laughs> that's you. We have a Spalding <laughs> basketball autographed, of course. And of course the LA Lakers Shaquille O'Neal autographed jersey. And those are all autographs. And, and Shaq, you uh, you and I have a couple things in common. We both spent some time at Fort Stewart. That's actually where I was born. Um, and oh, we so also, yeah, isn't that awesome? I mean, I think we were I at different times. Huh? Yes, you're, <laughs> oh, you're uh, a lot older than I am. Yes, I was going <laughs> to say, I think I was already gone before you yes. got there. 
Um, exactly. But I was going to say we're also both a size 22 shoe. So we've got a lot <laughs> in common. Um, and then we also have the Reebok Shacknosis autograph sneakers. They fit like a glove on me. So um, these are awesome. So just thank you again for these awesome giveaways and giving um, our viewers an opportunity to get these hand your, their hands on them. So just remember, like this video and comment your name. Also, Emily, how tall are you? My goodness, you! I, I, I know we haven't seen each other in person like that many times, but man, you you look a real I, little I, next to them shoes. I don't really want to like brag or show up, uh, Mr. O'Neill, but I am five one and a half on a good day. So, yeah. But no, no, Shaq, man, we appreciate you for uh for for, for allow you know giving those giving us those those blessings so we can bless somebody else with them so we appreciate it yes um and, and like i say but you always you always blessing people like you said you moved to dallas and uh and i live in dallas as well we we all stationed in, in that dallas area and i'm going to every home depot or Lowe's just waiting on you to come in there so i got a, i got my lawnmower just at the register <laughs> just waiting I never go <laughs> i'm like baby he'll pop uh, up here one day and just <laughs> one day but but one day but now we appreciate you you got a, such a good heart and a good spirit and you also got so, a lot of nicknames yep so you got a, a a gang of nicknames and, and diesel shack daddy i'm a little uncomfortable calling you shack daddy but uh big, big the big air title <laughs> shack so what what is your favorite and why my new name is the big aphis <laughs> Oh, there we go. Yeah. The, 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 I love that. that. <laughs> yes. Listen, we we about to trademark that right right now. The big yeah. Yeah. We'll send you one of these pens. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the X. No. So the other day I got an email from Chief, and it was a picture of him standing next to this humongous cutout and it was of you holding an epson printer <laughs> so i just wanted yeah. to throw that in there i am so what's next yeah. for you shaq can you share with us anything that you're working on no shaq, just, you got me uh, looking real little on this picture though i i i, I saw yeah. it, I'm bad to cut you, off. You, you got me feeling with some all, type of way about myself with all due respect sir you are a little guy sir <laughs> With all due respect, sir, you are a little guy, sir. <laughs> Man, I got you, say Shaq. Touche, touche. I get it. Mic drop. <laughs> so, uh, so, what am I working on next? I, I like to wake up every day and just make somebody else smile, make somebody else happy. So right now I'm at the Epson shoot. I'm about to shoot about five commercials. And then tomorrow I'm uh, traveling to Orlando with my mother. And we're going to spend a couple of days together. And, but other than that, I don't really have anything big I'm working on. And then just as a quick reminder, Shaq, do you mind sharing with us where we can keep up for the latest and greatest on Shaq? I guess on uh, my social media sites, follow me on Twitter at Shaq, you know, Instagram at Shaq, and LinkedIn Shaq. Everything Shaq. Awesome. And I, I think we got some kind of technical difficulties. Not, not even have to look at me and Shaq uh, outpoint each other <laughs> on, on, in my office. <laughs> uh, I was wondering why you kept this picture up so long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's not by design because I, I don't like looking at my I don't like looking at myself too long anyway, it gets a little awkward. So uh yeah. <laughs> but oh for God. our chief chat view but for our chief chat viewers, this episode will be available on YouTube and Spotify so you can rewatch with your friends or catch up with past episodes. Uh, be sure to tune in on Tuesday, July twenty sixth for Mike Eli and John Jones for from the Eli Young Band and on August second for author and director David Kep. And remember We'll be giving away some signed shack items, so be sure to enter by hitting the like or love or any, whatever reaction you want to hit, and also including your name in the comment section for a chance to win. So, uh, so Shaq, man, it 
I just don't, I don't know. I don't think, well, I think you do realize it. And I think you, you know, the impact that you've had on the world. And uh, as soon as we put the, the, the uh, promo for this show, um, we got so much, so many people, uh oh, my light, my lights are going off and everything over here. But yeah, before you turn so off the lights, let's get one thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for the theme music, Jack. I, I appreciate that. But uh, no, you, you've had such a huge impact on the world, and uh, you, you came from a very, very grounded place. Uh, your parents, uh, you got the drill sergeant that, that, instill discipline and uh, I, I heard on another another podcast that he you you was doing the most when you got your first check and and, and took he took you to florida and, and and dropped you off somewhere and said hey take care of these people and you've been taking care you know, of people ever since was, so you know what happened was it was uh we were playing against the new york knicks i had a terrible game and he said fly home so i flew home he asked the question what happened and I gave the wrong answer. The, uh, the, the answer I gave was I couldn't handle the pressure in New York. So he was very upset. He got straight in the military mode. You meet me here tomorrow morning at 0500. You know what happens if you're going to be late. So I get there at 5. We jump in the car. We go about 5 to 10 miles. And there's a homeless family. Not a homeless guy or a homeless lady. A homeless family. A man. His wife and two kids came on some hard times. So my dad used to take him food, take him blankets, take him clothes. And he said, pressure is where you don't know where your next meal is coming from. I'm tired of you superstar athlete brat talking about pressure when you don't know what pressure is. Get out. So then I had to get out and take care of the family. I got him an apartment. I paid him off for the year. I got the guy started. I made a few phone calls, got him jobs. But I learned a lot. I learned that pressure is where you don't know where your next meal is coming from. And that's that's like I said, just even coming from that, that hearing that story is just so impactful for so many to realize that we, man, there's blessings and everything, and, and even the times that we think we're we're going through the worst time, uh, there's always a blessing in that. So uh, thank you for you know reiterating. Thank you for being who you are, because like I said, you don't take yourself that serious. So you, like I said, and you you seem approachable, even though you know you seven something. And uh, and just you just you got a good heart, good spirit, and we appreciate you for you know spending some time with our military family here at, at Aphis. Anything for people that uh, on, on on military bases. This is where I come from. This is where I was made. And again, listen, I used to love going in the commissary and going in the PX and going to the annex. My favorite place was, was the, the annex because there wasn't a lot of people in there. And they had those pint ice creams, vanilla for a dollar. I used to get an orange juice for a dollar and an ice cream for a dollar and walk from uh, my side of the base up to the gym. So I stopped like every you know few minutes, get me some ice cream before it melt. Because you know how hot it is in Texas, drink that orange juice. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to do that. that was my routine. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you for sharing your story with us. Uh, if you don't mind hanging on uh, just Till we finish the live so we can kind of say our formal goodbyes but uh again man you you spending any time with us is a blessing and we appreciate you and thank you for what you've done uh for the military community and the world at large because like i said you you're con constantly impacting the world i even see uh people in the league now you can't hear me can you guys hear me yeah. hold on is, are you messing with me Shaq, or what I sure am. Got you. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness! Thank See, you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and uh, end the show, but we're gonna please stay on uh, so we can kind of say our formal goodbyes. But thank you so much. Uh, you've been a, like I said. I, listen, I can't even say anything else. Thank you so much, uh, Chief Chat Out. Thank you.